Today, I am going to Simi Valley, California to check out the house of fellow collector Jason Dubak Deliveries. Hey, I'm here to see Jason's collection. Go away, nerd. Today, I am at Jason's house, Dubak Deliveries, for an awesome room tour here in Simi Valley, California. Let's check it out. Welcome Spice Runners. Hope you get to enjoy my collection today. Really excited to share it with you. Uh, been putting together this room for about the last year and a half. Moving things around, curating some of it, moving some stuff out, getting some new ideas. Uh, everybody's collections help inspire me to try new things and uh, definitely still have some options I want to uh, implement and change some things around, but uh, let's check it out. All right, so starting off, we've got uh, premium format and uh, one six Luke on Tauntaun, but uh, when I arrange my stuff, I try to go in chronological order for the uh, uh, series. So obviously we've got Rogue One, we got the uh, Sand Trooper from A New Hope, Luke on Tauntaun from uh, Empire Strikes Back. So that's a one six sideshow. It's not quarter scale, but kind of seemed to fit. So one tenth Gentle Giant, Rancor and Handler that uh, Really, really love this piece. Early piece from Gentle Giant. I uh, was able to get it at Star Wars Celebration 2019. Tell us a funny story about that one. <laughs> yeah, so we've been uh, looking at this piece and uh, a couple others that we'll see in a moment. And, you know, living in LA, but in Chicago, it's like, how am I going to get this stuff back? You're worried about it breaking, you know, in transit. But last day of the con, uh, me and Evan were sitting in uh, the Toys That Made Us panel. We're both kind of yeah. sitting there thinking we only got a couple hours left to pick up some uh, some last items before the convention closes out. And we're like, let's go. You wanna just go pick up, the, pick up those bad boys? We're like, yep, let's do it. So we cut out of the panel, pick up all, all our loot, and we go to, to do the shipping uh, for this. Luckily, uh, arrived intact. I was worried about the little drool breaking off, but uh, came through. And Evan, of course, got his life-size Han and Carbonite shipped uh, separately, which came out beautifully in his collection. Got a... Uh, on a DL44 uh, blaster, uh, it's a Etsy custom. Not uh, totally accurate, but uh, just kind of cool little uh, accent piece on Looks the wall. Good, dude. Got the quarter scale uh, Vader from uh, Sideshow. Uh, don't think the electronics are, are working right now. I don't have it plugged in, but uh, great piece, love it. Pretty pretty standard uh, look of Vader. It really just uh, helps tie the room together. Then we got the quarter scale, uh, Sideshow, Mandalorian, and Grogu. No, this one's a controversial piece. Uh, I do think the Iron Studios one is better, but this is still a really, really good piece. I uh, really like uh, the sculpt, the paint application, the metallic look of the armor, I think is pretty impressive. And uh, Grogu doesn't look half bad either. Coming down here, we've got the one sixth uh, scale uh, figure. So starting with the New Hope and going all the way through to Jedi. Uh, there's a mix here of Sideshow, Kota Bakia, uh, Hot Toys, and I think that's it. Uh, Gentle Giant have a couple uh, statues down below when it gets to uh, the, uh, the Stormtrooper and uh, the Boba Fett. This was the other piece at uh, Celebration. I picked up the 1 6th uh, Wampa, which I've been looking for uh, for quite a while and had never even seen it in person, only seen it online, but was really excited to be able to pick that up along with the Rancor. And then we've got the one sixth uh, Hot Toys uh, Empire Strikes Back Yoda. Built a little diorama and threw some moss around it just to kind of give it some uh, environmental effect. That's cool, dude. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then did the same thing with Wicket uh, down here. So that's a one six scale Wicket Kodo uh, Scout Trooper piece, which is a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be because it was supposed to be one seventh scale, but it actually looks like it's one sixth. Got the Return of the Jedi uh, Luke uh, from Hot Toys. And then uh, over here, I've just got some space that I'm uh, saving for the NYC ATST and then also the General Giant uh, Admiral Akbar. I got on pre order. I'm going to put those over there. Nice. Yep. What about these guys here? Are these General Giant? So we got 
Yeah, so we got the one six Jungle Giant. Uh, actually, sorry, one seventh Jungle Giant Luke uh, Dreamer statue. He's a little bit out of scale with uh, with the rest of the pieces here, but still looks pretty good. I got the one sixth uh, Han Solo from Jungle Giant, and then uh, Chewbacca from Kotobukiya, uh one six piece that picked up at Celebration twenty nineteen. So really good good pairing, even though one's a a vinyl figure and the other one's. A, a, a polystone statue, but still think they look pretty good. Like I said, try to keep it, you know, chronological order just so, uh, you know, it's probably a little obsessive on my part, but I like doing that. Looks good, dude. <laughs> what about this General Giant piece right here? Yeah, so we got the Stormtrooper General Giant statue, milestone statue that came out this year. Really love that piece. It's awesome. Um, very accurate and, and kind of a classic pose uh, for the Stormtrooper. And then we've got uh, the one six sideshow uh, Han and Carbonite, which does light up. Um, nice piece. Then we've got the Empire Strikes Back um, Boba Fett, that uh, is also General Giant and was sculpted by a friend of the shows, which is uh, Joe Mena, who's extremely talented, and he did that piece as an exclusive for the Premier Guild uh, General Giant subscription this year. Yeah. So the artwork at the uh, the top, uh, I can't remember if that print's called Pin Down, but. Courtesy of, uh, of Eben, uh, got that for me uh, for a Christmas gift one year. And then uh, the next one, the Rogue One piece, uh, I believe is Acme Archives. Can't remember the artist's name, but I really like that print, kind of like the pop culture style uh, to it. And then uh, down below, we've got uh, the Dave Dorman uh, uh, artist proof uh, print that uh, he actually signed uh, for us at Celebration 2019. Really love that, that uh, scene, big fan of the the uh, Sand Troopers, uh, looking for C-3PO and R2. Of course, featuring the Dewbacks, which are one of my favorite creatures. So really like like that piece. And it was awesome to get to meet Dave in person at Celebration 2019. Another piece that he did uh, that we picked up same uh, celebration was uh, kind of what David Boudreau talks about is you know, an in-between scene. Uh, so something you didn't actually see in The Force Awakens, but could very well have happened where you see Ray getting hassled by some uh, First Order troopers, and she does have BB-8 tucked away in her salvage uh, net there. Just thought it was a really cool scene. You got some Imperial Walkers, or AT-ATs, or AT-ATs, as, uh, <laughs> as many people prefer, um, in the background. So just just love Dave Dorman. Been a big fan of his since the, uh, the mid-90s when he was working for Dark Horse Comics. So it was just awesome to be able to pick up that piece. The one above, I'm going to blank on the artist's name and, and uh, feel bad about that, but that uh, those are the uh, uh, May the 4th prints that came out in 2022, um, honoring the original trilogy, and uh, you could buy them individually or as a set. I got the set and then framed them up. I had a really cool local framer help me pick kind of the metal uh, pitted frame, which I wasn't thinking originally would look really good, but really happy with it. It's kind of a dark gold. Um, but really happy with just the presentation of those three together. Some Joe Hansi yeah. customs. Yeah, and then this is one of my favorite pickups this year. Uh, so the extremely talented uh, Joel Hansi, who's a good uh, buddy of ours, does amazing custom work. If you haven't checked out his work before, highly recommend uh, you look into uh, to what he has available. He does uh, custom projects for people. This was one he did for me. This was inspired, obviously, by Galaxy's Edge and Doc Ondar's of antiquities where you've got uh, you know creature heads uh, full size they have full size so I went in one six because obviously I couldn't fit a one to one scale creature heads but Joel did an amazing job cranking these out super fast uh, got you know the dewback was the main one I was thinking of and uh, then just the others kind of came with it we might be extending this project uh, in 2023 and filling up the wall um, oh, gonna... nice. <laughs> Be uh, working on some other uh, creatures that uh, that he's going to start banging out for me. So more to come, but so far it's it's just it's totally beaten my expectations as far as what I I thought he was going to be able to achieve. And it's just uh, I just love looking at this one. It just kind of it's a nice different uh, collectible setup or different uh, different accent piece among the collection. All right, and the funny story with this print, <laughs> <laughs> so Katana Between Two wor Worlds is uh, I, uh, I had seen this uh, two years ago 
really liked it. Uh, my wife is always complaining she doesn't know what to get me for Christmas as it relates to Star Wars. So I said to Evan, I said, hey, drop the hit. Uh, let her know I really want this. And he's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let her know about it. And then uh, he ends up picking it up for himself and he gets the first uh, first of the run, number one out of the series. So, And then she ended up not buying it for me because she said, you know, I, I didn't know you didn't really push it. So I ended up having to buy it for myself. And then, uh, well, what we can do is I can send you <laughs> mine and we can give this one away on the show. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You heard it here first. Wow. Man, <laughs> that is, that is, mul- that is uh, mighty generous. Oh, yeah. So I'll send you mine. <laughs> cool. So then uh, same artist uh, as the Ahsoka is the uh, the Mandalorian uh, print. Let's see if I can there turn that off there. We, get yeah. it better. Um, we met Darren Tan, who's a great uh, illustrator. Um, he's worked for Lucasfilm, video game companies, all kinds of concept work. And really excited when this piece came out and uh, got the custom frame from Michael's kind of a Western theme to go with uh, you know, the, the Western themes of the Mandalorian. It's, it's funny how we met Darren Tan. We got in a random line for, was it like a fantasy flight game? <laughs> yep. And then there was an artist signing Star Wars stuff. And then we found the, the world of Darren Tan and never stopped. Yeah. Guy's just an amazing artist, amazing Star Wars artist, amazing artist for different properties. But yeah, his Star Wars stuff, uh, he just this year had the, uh, the Grievous print with Sideshow and uh, the new Vader one that I know people are really, really jazzed about. A buddy of mine uh, used to work for a collectibles company and they would have all different types of collectibles that they would sell. And this was a Macquarie uh, limited edition print that they released with actual uh, film cells from the scene of Luke battling the Rancor. Uh, Battery's out right now, but this does light up and you can see the film cell in there. It was a really cool piece that uh, I've had, gosh, probably about 20 years now, and uh, just love having that in the collection. This one here is the uh, the Darth Vader uh, one-to-one EFX uh, PCR helmet that uh, Evan was kind enough to uh, to sell to me as he was upgrading to the Sideshow one-to-one bust. Uh, this is probably my favorite piece of the entire collection. If the house was on fire, this would be the one thing that's definitely getting grabbed. And uh, Evan was cool enough to get me a signature plaque of uh, Brian Muir, the uh, sculptor for the helmet. So really great uh, accent piece to go along with, uh, with what is my favorite part of my collection. Cybercraft uh, 332nd, is that the... 332nd, <laughs> yep, that's the squadron. Yeah. yeah, this piece blew me away. I had never bought Cybercraft before and uh, was just really amazed at the quality uh, of their, uh, their piece and the paint application, which is just awesome with the, uh, the Ahsoka uh, design. Got a Black Series uh, Luke uh, X-Wing fighter pilot helmet and the Black Series uh, Boba Fett ESB helmet, which uh, and it was on the fence between that one and the EFX. I think for the, the price, uh, this one really is tough to beat. And uh, from a distance, you know, it's, uh, it's great in the collection just to have. Uh, we got the uh, Mythos, uh, I think, what are these, one-fifth scale? One-fifth. Yeah. yeah. Um, this was a heartbreaker for me because I absolutely loved this piece and I loved the pre-production <laughs> uh, shots of Anakin and I was planning to put these two together. Oh, uh, and when that thing actually came out, it just was a heartbreaker for me because I was ready. I had it on pre-order. I thought they were just looked great together. I just can't get past the So portions. disappointing, dude. Yeah. Like crackhead Anakin. <laughs> and the Napoleon Dynamite, I think yeah. you call them. That was the best description. <laughs> it's just such a missed opportunity or a wasted opportunity because the rest of that piece looks awesome. It would have looked great here. You know, maybe maybe if they put it on deep discount, I'll get it, have Joel fix the face, whatever. But it's it's just a crime because the Obi-Wan it's, portrait it's beautiful, is just, they knocked yeah. it out of the park. So I don't know what happened there but yeah i just i love the uh the flame effects and you know the uh the cut marks you see on the super battle droid so we're kind of now into the the clone wars uh section of uh, my collection which for the longest time i wasn't going to do clone wars i wasn't going to do prequel stuff but you know as space opened up in my collection and the pieces that were coming out were just so awesome it's like i've, I've got to jump onto this this is the uh, the one seventh uh, Rex and Ahsoka Tana um, 
Kota Bukayu, uh, uh paired set. You can get them individually. Uh, the bases do connect so that you can't have the diorama look. Got it on a little turntable now, but one of my favorite scenes uh, from the Clone Wars, which was the final season, final episode where uh, Rex and Ahsoka are having to fight their way out uh, of the clone troopers that are trying to execute Order 66 and take her out. So uh, Kota Bukayu for for what they do, I'm just always amazed uh, of what they're able to, to achieve in their paint applications and their pose and and styling of the pieces that they produce. And I'm, I've been so close to getting the Bad Batch uh, group because I like those as well, but I've had to be a little more restrained there. So this one though, I, this is one of my favorite pieces in the collection. Just absolutely love Rex and, and the styling on Ahsoka. Down here, we've got uh, some Gentle Giant uh, original Clone Wars, the Gendi Tartakovsky uh, series that uh, came out in, what, 2003, somewhere around there. Um, absolutely love the design, love that series, that micro series where General Grievous was actually a badass and uh, was knocking, knocking out Jedi left and right and taking uh, sabers in his collection. but. Uh, really love the styling and the design on these pieces. I'd love to get the others. There's about six other pieces. Uh, the Mace Windu, the Roar and Cobb, uh, a bunch of different uh, characters. General Kenobi. I wish they had made a Dirge. That's the one I think uh, would have been a great addition to this line. But anyway, uh, if, even if I stop at these three, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, love the Grievous and, and Pose on Anakin. Next to that, we've got a 501st uh, clone wars design helmet uh from samo i love art uh just discovered them this year uh really love what they do um very different from cybercraft you know different kind of feel and uh and uh, materials that they use for their helmets but really impressive uh, as display pieces nonetheless so until 2022 i didn't collect sabers and now i guess i do <laughs> <laughs> so uh everything changed when i ended up going to uh, galaxy's edge for the first time and picked up uh, the anakin saber the count dooku and the vader and then the last one there is the desert wanderer um, also known as the obi-wan saber from the obi-wan series by corbanth and that is by far my favorite lightsaber um out of all sabers that are available right now, I just love the weathering on that, the look, the feel, the authenticity of it is just, uh, it's beyond reproach. Love it. All right, down here again, I, I've talked about how much I love Kotobukiya and what they do with uh, with the vinyl um, figures. And uh, these are, are definitely highlights for me as uh, we've got just a, a series of clone troopers. We've got the uh, phase one uh, clone trooper, I uh, got that one off eBay, and actually the guy who sold it to me did a custom uh, uh, paint application on the base, so that's really cool. Uh, Captain Bly uh, next to next up in the lineup, and then a 501st, which is Hot Toys, um, jumped on that uh, before they sold out. And then the last one, obviously Arc Trooper, um, which is interesting because Kodo put that figure out in a number of different paint applications, but the red one was the one I wanted to have in my collection so so are these dudes one six go <clears throat> yeah i th i think so they, they might be one good. seventh but yeah they're pretty close to the one six hot toys yeah they are i think they are one sixth yeah they're now recently doing more one seventh uh but yeah these these were uh one six these are dope dude yeah i love those those are all ebay pickups whoa what about <laughs> this sucker <laughs> courtesy of corban uh, so went down a bit of a rabbit hole when we got the, the lightsaber and then I saw uh, that they had props and model kits and this wasn't originally on the site, but thanks to a uh, good friend, Jeff Sage, also known as Star Wars Addict, he let me know that uh, Corbanth actually had a few of these available, actually full size, which Jeff got. And then of course the half size, or the full size, but bust. Uh, version so i with the bus because uh, i didn't have room for the full size uh k2so but uh it did also come with a, a signed plaque from alan tudyk which just kind of sealed the deal for me and it's it's a great piece has a has a great presence among the collection one of my favorite droids from star wars i know he's a, he's a popular one but uh nice fiberglass piece good weathering uh love the imperial insignia on the uh, the shoulder pauldrons but uh, a lot to like uh with this piece we got here. On here, we've got, uh, I 
think this is a 1-6 uh, Death Trooper from Rogue One, Kota Bakia. Um, really enjoyed the, this design. I love the Death Troopers. Um, love the weathering on this. There's just dirt and grime, you know, the joints and in the recesses of the armor. So really cool piece. He lights up as well. Um, going to be doing some, some modifications with these shelves as uh, additional pieces come out uh, in 2023. Below, just got some of my collector's books and a little Riddell uh, C-3PO helmet. It's just kind of holding down holding down the books for now. This is by far one of my favorite pieces that I picked up in 2022, which is the uh, the Heavy Infantry Mando. I just was blown away. I, I didn't buy this when it was initially on the market and I paid the price literally uh, on the secondary market by paying an inflated price for him. But when I saw this thing in person uh, at a collector shop and just the weathering on the armor, just the detail in the gun, I mean, it's like, it just blew my mind and it's it's still something I just come in and I stare at regularly just because the attention to detail on this thing, I, I just am amazed that they were able to get that paint application. Um, and just the armor design is cool, the gun is cool, uh, the helmet is just incredible. Um, you know, I love the design uh, within Star Wars from prequels, original, and even the sequel trilogy. I, I think there's some really good design there. So. Uh, Mando really has done a lot of a lot of great things when it comes to armor design for the Mandos and creature design. So it's one of the reasons why I also picked up the one six uh, Mando on Blurg. I missed the original one six Mando with the Dura Steel uh, armor, so I jumped at the chance to to grab this. Uh, I know there's some controversy with the Blurg, you know, as being very light and kind of hollow and. Um, I know some of our friends have called it like the pool toy you know, <laughs> material that you could get, but you know, really it's just kind of a showpiece on display. I think it's just, uh, it's just a really nice, uh, creature, uh, from Hot Toys when we don't get many creatures from Hot Toys. So really like that, uh, that they produce this. I'm going to talk to Joel Hazy, see what I can do to kind of glisten up the gums and the teeth a little bit. So a little more, a little more glare on there, on the gums, make it look a little more, uh, like he's, uh, he's got drool. And then uh, also on the Mando shelf here, we've got uh, the One Six Hot Toys uh, Bo-Katan. Another extraordinary piece with just awesome paint application, the tailoring in the outfit, the belt pouches, the holsters, the boots, and the undersuit. I mean, it's just it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Um, for anybody that's on the fence on this because of the Katie Sackhoff portrait, I can uh, tell you from firsthand experience, it is not uh, as... Uh, as uh, bad as, as people think. I don't think it's bad at all, actually. I think it really has a good likeness to her and it does not look like John Cena uh, to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. bro <laughs> So, uh, missed the uh, Ahsoka Tana uh, uh, sabers when they originally came out at Galaxy's Edge. Uh, had no way to get the uh, the limited edition um, release that came out May the 4th of 2022 that came in a nice collector's musical box case. Uh, was able to get it up, uh, get it, uh, was able to get this with a uh, Facebook Marketplace seller that had them at a very reasonable price. And so I jumped at the chance to, uh, to add these to the collection and really excited with the stand I got off Etsy uh, to display them like this. Next to those, we got a Galaxy's Edge uh, Kylo Ren. Uh, Saber, which I think is a really cool design, uh, still, you know, although underwhelmed with uh, where the Kylo Ren story arc went, I still really like the design of a Saber, and I really do love the design of the uh, the Dark Saber, um, as uh, represented here from the Mando series. So sticking with this kind of as the Mando section, got a uh, Tusken Raider uh, from uh, Mando Season 2, and uh, really great tailoring, great weapons, great accessories with this piece. Uh, was thinking about adding a few more, but going to hold off for now. And then uh, next to that is a little bit of a cheat. This is actually a Return of the Jedi uh, Legends in 3D uh, bust of uh, Boba Fett, but uh, it kind of works uh, okay as a substitute for the uh, the uh, damaged Boba Fett armor from uh, The Mandalorian Season 2. But probably something I'll change out at some point. Down here, we've got uh, some sequel trilogy uh, pieces. So this was uh, the limited edition uh, Bloodstain uh, uh, Finn, First Order Trooper. 
that was a Sideshow exclusive and uh, actually might have been a San Diego Comic Con, but they ended up selling a few on the site and I was able to get it before they sold out. And then, uh, I don't know if this was called Desert Wanderer Ray or Scavenger Ray, I think it was. Um, again, you know, not being a, a big fan of the uh, sequel trilogy, but uh, these two pieces were just exceptional and, and really still happy with having them in, in the collection for display. This, I think, was the, uh, the United States Postal um, release of the Stamps series they had back in the early 2000s. And uh, um, the other one I have, they're the actual Stamps, but uh, this was a print with an envelope uh, branded for Star Wars and always really liked it. They came framed, so it was just an easy to, uh, to hang piece. Uh, below that, we got our one-to-one -one scale uh, Grogu, which uh, I know a lot of people like to chop up, so he's... Uh, He's now posable, as many people are, many people who are braver than I am and uh, have more skills in making that happen. So for right now, he's just kind of chilling uh, in his original pose and stance from Sideshow. Yeah, so below that, we've got the uh, Death Watch Mando helmet from, uh, from the Hasbro Black series. Love this piece, love that design. Uh, I've been meaning to pick up a few other uh, Death Watch Mando uh, pieces, but so far, just had the helmet. Below that, we got the uh, Beskar version of the Mando helmet from uh, Black Series. Again, uh, I know there's great offerings from EFX and Denuo Novo, um, but you know, I think the price to value for, for the Black Series pieces can't be beat. And I'm happy with how they look in the, in the collection. You know, they won't stand up to, to close scrutiny uh, from purists that are looking for complete accuracy, but I, I really like how they display. Uh, equally with the Bo-Katan uh, Black Series piece. That's, uh, that's there on the bottom. Just really, really good piece. I know there are better options out there, but uh, for the money, can't be beat. Yeah, so uh, I mentioned earlier, Samo, I love art, company out of Russia, um, picked up this helmet this year, the 501st uh, Clone Trooper. Love, love, love uh, this design, this color. Um, the weathering on it is just fantastic. Um, these helmets are pretty affordable. Very comparable to Cybercraft, uh, just a little bit different in uh, the design and kind of sheen of the helmets. But, you know, when I saw this uh, come up this year, I had to have it. I really regret missing out on the Sideshow 1 to 1 uh, 501st Trooper bust. I just think is absolutely gorgeous. Would love to pick that up, but I think Fetch is a pretty penny on the secondary market, so it might be a while. In the meantime, this is a great, great piece to kind of fill that, fill that void. Here we've got uh, one sixth uh, Kodo Bikia, uh Darth Maul from the Phantom Menace. Um, Kodo just did some great things. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't have companion Obi Wan and uh, and Qui Gon that I think would look great with this. But uh, the Darth Maul in itself, to me, it's one of the better uh, paint colors that uh, matches the red of Darth Maul. Seems like lately a lot of the manufacturers are going super dark with that red, but to me it always kind of stood out more as a, a brighter orange in hue. And I just love the pose of this piece and just uh, everything from his tabard and his cloaks kind of you know flying around. So uh, I've got little ones, uh, that's why it's in a, an acrylic case. So he's, uh, make sure he's protected. And then uh, we got the phase one, uh, 501st uh, clone trooper, also from Samo, I love art. This one as well, just really great weathering and uh, detail and uh, for the money. Uh, it's just a, a great piece to put on display. Don't do, I don't do uh, cosplay or anything like that. So it's uh, strictly gonna be uh, displayed in the collection. So it works out great for that purpose. This is actually um, the Revenge of the Sith bus of uh, Commander Cody, Vader, and uh, the Shock Trooper are probably the first high-end Star Wars collectibles uh, that I ever acquired. So this really is what kicked off my collection. Got these in uh, 2003, I think it was, uh, maybe 2004. Um, just really, really great pieces. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of General Giant, just their craftsmanship, their sculpting, um, their paint applications, and these guys are just phenomenal. Fortunately, I can't do uh, the uh, the saber for Vader. He does come with the saber, but uh, it's too tall for this current display case. But the head uh, detail of just the burns and and uh, all the battle damage from uh, the fight on Mustafar is, is awesome. Also awesome is uh, the Rogue One uh, bus that we've got here. 
got a shore trooper, death trooper, uh, gin, and then uh, the uh, K2SO uh, mini bust. Really, really happy with these and, and love how they display. Here we've got uh, Royal Guards from uh, Return of the Jedi. I am uh, actively hunting for the uh, Emperor on Throne, uh, one tenth scale from Kota Bakia, because these are uh, Kota Bakia uh, manufacture. And then there is that uh, complimentary Emperor on Throne that uh, I need to pick up and should have got it when it was initially on the market. And I, I was foolish and passed on it, but uh, I'm gonna have to pay secondary market prices, but it's gonna look great once it's in there. Love this piece, uh, General Giant 110th uh, Scout Trooper, and I love the fact that it looks like it's levitating, the speeder bike. Uh, everything is pegged in uh, through uh, the figure itself, so that one planted foot is the only thing that is anchoring uh, the entire display, so it does look like uh, the speeder bike is, is hovering, which is really cool. Great detail from uh, General Giant. And then the last one's here, so uh, again, uh, sequel trilogy, not uh, end-all be-all for me, and uh, kind of soured on it over time, but I do think that visually and design-wise, there are some great things to love. Uh, Captain Phasma, huge miss opportunity with that character, but gorgeous looking character, and uh, these are the one-tenth uh, Kotobukiya uh, Artifacts Plus pieces that I did a little troop building with. Um, meant to get the flame thrower trooper, but never picked that up, but really happy with, with how these look and the little story that they tell when they're posing. These are actually uh, Bandai um, uh, action figures. And Last Jedi, you know, uh, again. Your, <laughs> your favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> Visually, it's striking. This scene in particular, the fight in the throne room with the, uh, the royal guards, absolutely loved it. And so uh, when I saw that Bandai was producing uh, these figures and the variety of royal guards, thought, okay, this would be a cool little little diorama scene to set up, and I'm really happy with this. Other than Kylo Ren falling over a lot, it's a pretty good uh, pretty good display. So uh, this is the first Darren Tan uh, print that uh, they ever had. Um, this is one actually they were given away at uh, Celebration 2019 that me and Evan picked up. Uh, it's really cool that I was able to, uh, to pick that up and frame it. I uh, really love just the representation of Vader in that piece. It's a smaller print, but uh, displays really well. I just love Darren's style. Don't worry. Uh, and then this is actually an original piece from uh, no, illustrator Darren McAlbert. Uh, he does a lot of Star Wars uh, illustrations. I think he's done some work for Tops. Uh, when I saw he did this, uh, this piece, I think late 2021 or early 2022, I mean, the message room was like, let me know when it goes on your Etsy store because I want to pick it up. And I was lucky enough to, uh, to snag the original. And it's all uh, marker, which is really phenomenal. Just the shading and detail he gets out of uh, Copic uh, marker. So this is the one-to-one -one scale Gentle Giant uh, Death Trooper helmet that uh, they produced in partnership with Nissan. Uh, so I know George just recently covered the Range Trooper from Solo, but these were limited edition helmets that uh, Gentle Giant... Uh, produced for uh, Nissan so that when people actually bought a vehicle, they got uh, these helmets, which I think is uh, is a pretty nifty marketing idea, but it kind of sucks for us collectors because you couldn't get it unless you bought a Nissan Rogue in the case of the, the Death Trooper. So I actually found it uh, from a, a seller on Facebook uh, who, uh, who bought the Nissan Rogue, but for whatever reason wanted to sell this piece. Uh, I don't know what number it is. Uh, I know uh, there weren't many of these made, kind of like the Range Trooper that George just recently reviewed on his channel, but love this piece. I wish General Giant would do more uh, more helmets, but it's got a really cool base, kind of like a Death Star theme base, and it's got the clear acrylic rod, so it looks like it's hovering. Was, was the guy's Rogue at least cool? <laughs> yeah, the Rogue was cool. It looked a little beat up, like <laughs> it had been through uh, the Battle on Scarif, maybe. <laughs> This is uh, just a Black Series uh, Stormtrooper helmet, and uh, I think this is also um, the design from Rogue One, so technically not A New Hope, but it's, uh, I think it's pretty close. Love that piece. Uh, the next one is also the Black Series uh, Kylo Ren um, voice changer mask that I just paired with a, uh, a tunic that I think was from a, a Disney Store's uh, piece. So actually like how they look together and uh, just created the combo. And then we've got a first order trooper. This is actually uh, a Novos um, before uh, a Novos uh, switched over to Denu a Novo. Uh, it's not the fiberglass uh, version, it's the, uh, the cheaper uh, plastic version, but uh, still really like the look and design of it. 
So that's everything. Thanks for uh, hanging out today and checking out the collection. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe give you some ideas on curating or building your own collection. Uh, but uh, otherwise, this was a lot of fun. Thanks to Eben for letting me share on the Spice Runners Lounge channel. And uh, until the next uh, collection tour, may the force be with you.